Hi, in this lesson I would like to introduce you the sound sensor. The sound sensor which is right here, just as the name says, it uses to detect sound. It uses the LM358 chipset which is right here in the middle, as well as the microphone which is right here. As we can see, the sound sensor has three pins. The first one is signal and then VCC and GND. The signal is an analog signal, which means when the chip detects sound, it can print us into the screen the analog value of it. Now, once we understand how the sensor works, let's try to connect it into our microcontroller and make it work. Now, after we understand how the sound sensor works, let's try to understand how can we connect it into our Arduino device. First, as we can see, the sound sensor is right here and it has three pins. The first one is signal, then we have VCC, and then we have GND. Now, let's pick up our Arduino and take a closer look. We have three pins right here. The signal pin we connect to A0, which means analog zero. The VCC we connect to five volt, and then the GND we connect to GND. And that's how can we make our sound sensor to work. It's very simple and very straightforward. Now, once we connected it successfully, Let's head over to our IDE and try to program our sensor and make it work. So we are back into our Arduino IDE. After we understand how to connect the sensor to our Arduino, we can see the live stream right here. We are going to move into our software and try to program it. Now, how is it going to work? Basically, we are going to take sound and then control the LED on board, which we will see later on. If sound is detected, the LED is on. Actually, if you take a closer look, you can see that when I talk, the LED goes on and off. Now, let's run the software and see how it actually happens. Once we execute the software, we can see the analog values over here. In the software itself, we set the LED pin as the built-in LED pin inside the Arduino, and the sound pin as a zero. Now, in the setup, we set the output and then the baud rate is 9600. In the analog value, we get the value from the sound pin, and then we print the value here, as we can see the random value. And if value is bigger than 700, then we will make the LED turn on and wait. And if not, which means it's slower than 700, we will turn the LED off. And that way, right here, we have the effect. When I'm speaking, the LED turn on and will not the LED turn off. Now we are here looking directly into a Raspberry Pi. After we understand how the sound sensor works, it's time to understand how can we connect it into a Raspberry Pi. As we can see, it's a little bit messy right here. It's because we use two modules. The first one, as we've discussed, is the sound sensor, which is right here. But the second one is the PCF module, which is right here. Because the sound sensor is an analog sensor, we have to use the PCF module in order to convert the analog sensor into a digital sensor and then introduce it to a Raspberry Pi. So let's take our breadboard closer, which is right here, and take a look at all the connections we have. First, we have the SDA and the SCL, which are I2C pins that come from our PCF sensor, which is right here. If we take a closer look into the PCF, we can see here SDA and SCL. The rest is VCC and GND. Now, if we put it back and take another closer look into our breadboard, we can see that we have 5V and GND, which go both to our sound sensor and to our PCF module. This is right here, and then we have GND, another GND here pin. Now you might be wondering what are those two pins right here. One pin goes from the PCF analog out, and the other pin go from the sound sensor. Which means, if we put it right here and try to explain how does it work, we have the sound sensor send analog signal to here, and then from here we send the analog sensor to the PCF module, and the PCF module convert the analog into digital and send it through I2C to our Raspberry Pi right here. Now when we understand how everything works together, it's time to go into our IDE or our console and write the code to see how to make it work. As we can see, we have the Raspberry Pi right here. We have the sound sensor as well as the PCF ADC right here. Now let's take a look at our code to see how can we modify it and make it work. First, 
we run the nano command which is right here in order to find the file which is 19 soundsensor.py in the sound founder sensor kit for rpi2 and python folder now if we take a look at the code we can see that the pcf8591 is right here we import it as adc then we import the rpi gpio as gpio in the set mode we set the mode to gpio bcm and then we set up the adc to number 48 which is the default address of the pcf module in the loop we will start counting we set the count to zero and then while true we will try to get the voice value from the adc the voice value means the intensity of the sound sensor and then if there is voice we will print the voice value and if the voice is smaller than 50 we will write that the voice detected the smaller number is the louder meaning if the higher number means it's more quiet in the room and then we will sleep 0.2 seconds and continue moving on also you might be wondering what the count is we will count how many times voice was detected in the room in the main software we will run this setup to set up the adc and then run the loop if keyboard interrupt detected we will stop the program now once we understand how everything works let's try to execute the code by taking the name of the file and running it using the python command as we can see we can see random value as i talk louder it can detect my voice now if we are quiet we can see that it doesn't detect anything but if we take my finger and hit here like this multiple times it will detect the voice in the room as well it's important to mention that you can adjust the sensitivity by using the potentiometer right here you can use your finger or a screwdriver to turn around the potentiometer and adjust the value in order to make the sensitivity work based on your demand. Opa, sorry. The sensor right here, so it will detect sound right here from the sound sensor. And make sure to adjust the poten with the potentiometer right here in order to make it work more accurately. Here, you see, I turned it around before and now it's not so much accurate. But if we turn it more and more, it will be more and more accurate. Here you see this is really sensitive. It just show printing numbers, but it's not really voice detection. Now, just like this, it should be just fine. Perfect. Just like this. Yeah, we can adjust the here, the potentiometer, but not just the potentiometer. We can also adjust the value in the software based on our demands. Just like this, we can detect the numbers. Perfect. I hope you learned something new and I will definitely see you in our next lesson.